Good morning, folks. We've got plasma and sunspots incoming. Don't blink, though. You'll miss one of them spitting out his chewing gum before class. Earth Facing Quiet 101 is about to begin, and incoming are the sunspots that fired the M6 solar flare at the end of April. And a massive prominence supported by solar tornadoes one and a half to two Earth diameters tall. We're going to look at a CME that erupted yesterday that will miss Earth, some mind-thumping news stories, and some interesting updates in the world of weather. But first, we come to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star to be relatively calm. Note that on the first day, geomagnetic disruptions waned. We were between coronal holes. It's short, though, ends in just 12 hours. And if the magnetosphere stays calm, the lithosphere probably won't. The top eruption threat of the day was over at the departing limb. Zooming in on that pop here, you may have noticed it already. The CME is not terribly large, however, and it is going to miss our planet. Solar flaring is still very low. The incoming sunspots, which include last month's flare maker near the limb, are not at all magnetically complex. Separation out ahead to the right with double negative red at the twin monsters on the left. When we look at the full disk heliographic from stereo, Zero faces Earth, so we see the bright sunspots coming in as we turn to negative 90. But after that, we may or may not get a coronal hole stream from the leading extension of the northern fields. Couple lighter days there and no sunspots until we see them dead center of a trans-equatorial portion of a coronal hole. Boy, that's going to make the middle of the month very interesting. As for now... Solar wind speed still coming back down. Assuming a density rise this morning doesn't create more instability today, we will finally have a calm magnetosphere with Earth-facing coronal holes. The energetic disruption was above our heads when the first opening crossed, and now comes the bigger one ending the southern field sector. Volcanic eruption way south in the Atlantic and a relatively unusual earthquake in an intermittently active location are all we've had thus far. Top stories begin here. A strange star in a binary system has its sunspots at the poles. This is like the Uranus of stars, except it's not the tilt that's off. It's the position and activity of the magnetic fields. This is a strange, strange discovery. We have also seen news of the second fastest megascale shockwave observed and opening the door for more such shockwaves to be discovered across the cosmos. We've been missing more than you could possibly imagine. Folks, as we enter May, the northern polar vortex is all but finished, capping off a lighter northern winter thanks to El Nino and a crazy amount of geomagnetic activity to end 2015. Tighten it up. But down south, we're getting into the swing of things, and if the sun keeps quiet and La Nina patterns prevail, it could be a rough three months south of the equator. Something new on the wind map. Three-hour prediction of precipitation overlay. We're going to use this today to enhance the current conditions at the end of the video, so you'll want to watch how Earth's atmospheric water is transformed into the storms that come across the land. We've got a deeper look coming today to SuspiciousObservers.org, where we answer your questions about the Earth's magnetic reversal and our enhanced vulnerability to a solar storm blackout. We'll also be introducing a new site we're building that'll be added to our free resource suite. We've got the next 12 hours of pressure and radar current global conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 3.35 a.m. on a warm New Mexico morning. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.